For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. And we reviewed this similar trade style in one of the previous videos. You can Google this. Uh, what if you only traded this one trading setup this week? This is a must, must watch because it's the importance about yesterday's high and low. And we, in this video, we demonstrate that just following that and taking one or two trades per day based off the previous day's highs and lows, how lucrative sometimes in certain templates that can be. So you can go and watch that video again. It's a fairly simple, straightforward approach. And again, everything in my trading is about keeping things as simple as possible. So one of the things I look at each day, I come to the screen, I've talked about this. There are, there are a couple of times a week I will look for setups just prior to the US window. Um, Obviously, there are trades in Asia and London. I don't, I don't take those uh, generally. I don't, I'm obviously not up in London. I don't want to be up. And again, I'm just trying to keep my window to that one hour. But there are certain setups prior to the windows uh, that can can set up. We'll talk about those in future videos. But today, I'm just hammering home identifying the explosive opportunities on the templates coming into a session, and so. It's important that you start to recognize the pattern of the day itself. Now we're we're looking at a Friday, the Canadian dollar, but this pattern itself, this this is a textbook template. So when you see one, I talked about uh, yesterday or previous videos, grouping my pairs into baskets. So I have the U.S. Canadian dollar, the U.S. Swiss franc, and the Japanese yen as one group. And what I look for out of that one group is whether or not there is a group that has one perfect template. Now, again, high and low of the day, the timing window. And if I'm going to take a trade on, on one of the US, CAD, Swiss, or Yen crosses, I want, to, I, I want to identify the pair that potentially is the cleanest template, the cleanest pattern. And so just talking about the templates, you should be at this point being able to recognize the type of day that is setting up. We've talked about three peaks. We've talked about three levels of rise. Now again, 25, 25, 25, three levels of rise heading into the first hour of the 12 candle window. We've broken yesterday's high of day. So we've gone up three levels. We've broken the previous day's high. We potentially have volume trapped above the double zero box. And that means we may have, if we get a high of day opportunity, we have space. Space where this market can fall through and typically will go 25 to 50 pips onto the other side. So this is a textbook template for an explosive trade opportunity. There was no news on the calendar. Obviously there was People are going to say, well, that's because the Fed said they're going to raise basis points another 75 pips. But this setup has been building over the whole day. So they can people can blame the news, but the news is merely an excuse for them to run the board. This is a, this is a long squeeze. They got longs caught up top. Now, if we were coming to the window purely for the New York open session, the 9.30 a.m. New York equity market open, we have three little peaks. We have the broken down market. We have our thesis. This is a high of day sell. So obviously, again, emphasizing you're coming off a three levels of rise, a high of day sell. Do not counter trend the peak formations. So, you know, the reason why I emphasize this is we've got people who want to bottom feed just because it's down low. But the trade is already in process when the market opens in New York. So we've got our three peaks and then an engulfment at 9.31 New York time. This is the same as a first bounce trade. The same, same trade setup for 50 plus pips following through to the low of the day. So again, 
people are talking about all kinds of other things. They're using indicators. They're sending me charts with indicators. They're asking me questions about other types of data to include uh, volume profiles, all of these things. Time of day, high and low, 12 candle window. Now, this is a template, three levels of rise. And you'll notice they went 50 pips outside of the double zero box at the timing window before collapsing and breaking down. This is the low hanging fruit trade continuing through the low of the day. And I, and I want to emphasize something with these trade setups. This, these aren't, these are scalable trades. So what that means is this. It's not that I got 25 pips or I got 50 pips in a move. This is a market that is not coming back. They have trapped volume. They're going to punish traders. When you understand that, when you really realize where this market's going, you will understand why you can scale into that move. It is not coming back. 25 to 50 pips below the low of the day. And that's when our timing window, again, you'll notice a new hour starts down low. So when we're in this move, we have the equity markets opening to break through the low. Hit stops on one side, trigger breakouts on the other, pull it back, get counter traders, and then punish traders who are all caught above the low of the day. So this is a perfect template. Swiss franc, again, very similar to the Canadian dollar. It went up three levels of rise, 25, 25, and 25, up to 50, just underneath 50 in our timing window before breaking down. So again, some traders may have traded the high of the day on the triple top. Same as the Canadian dollar, triple top. This is a long squeeze setup, the break in structure. And again, you can go look at these on your chart. So if you, if you can't see, this is clear. I'm, I'm demonstrating the overall template of the chart. These are explosive, scalable, sizable trade setups. This is the high of day sell setup. Triple top break in structure. New York opens after the breakdown through the low of the London session. So the higher low becomes our new low of the session for London. They break through that and pull back. Remember the three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse, the false break reversal. Or they stay range bound in a trading range. So we have our New York equity session opening. The market proceeds to continue to move down similar to the first bounce entry. The new hour reverses and comes back up 50 pips into traders that were short. So again, taking money off the table, understanding creeping trend down. The Canadian dollar blew off a little bit stronger. This market comes back up, but this is this this reversal setup again is not on my playbook. I'm looking for that first move. And if I'm going to continue to trade this, it's not taking out the low of the day. I don't care if it goes back up 50 pips because I want to take the, the trade back in the line of the direction of the peak formation. That's where the underlying strength of this market lies. And the low of the London day had not been taken out yet. So again, similar, similar templates, similar templates, slightly different. And as I mentioned in my last video, we have the Japanese yen, and I've not, it's not even on my watch list at the moment because it's been so out of whack, uh, meaning that even though it's been trending strongly over the course of a few weeks and this market just grinding its way up on the front side, and I said I wouldn't touch that until we saw some sort of break in structure. And the reason why was that even though it was grinding slowly in one direction, again, we talked about the wicks that were being punctured into two longs, you know, possibly by the Bank of Japan or the Central Bank or the, you know, whatever. But those longs were getting, even though they were in the right direction, were getting spiked 25, 50, maybe 75 pips. We have a market that's gone up vertical in the London session. The process is still the same for me. I just redraw my highs and lows if I was trading this. And again, I'm not, but demonstrating the process stays absolute no matter what. Before the U.S. session starts, I have my high of the London session, the low of the London session. This market's a bit blown out. We'll zoom in a bit here. It goes vertical in that first hour. So we have three peaks and 
the easiest thing that I typically do is I draw my left shoulder line. So we've got the high of the day. They go up three pushes and the market breaks down. Now, again, I, I wouldn't be trading this. I'd be very sus of the volatility, but, but a three push pattern in a right shoulder, head and shoulders pattern at the high of the day, I would short that pattern. <clears throat> when New York opens, it opens down low into this creeping trend. I come back to the same concept. First hour makes a high and a low. They pull it back inside. It's a creeping trend in the New York Open back into the low that they've put in in that first hour. Sorry, second hour. First hour makes the high of the day. They come down into the open of the second hour with three pushes and lock in the low of the day. <clears throat> so again, demonstrating that this is not necessarily a best trade setup, but, but peak formation high, peak formation low, pull it back inside, they work it down into the low. We have a new high made by the open of the New York session. As this market moved out so much, we'll just pull in our 15 minute chart to see it a bit clearer. They pull it back up and that market at the beginning of a new 15 minute bar, half an hour into the third hour, proceeds to drop. So again, timing, the rotations of the 15 minute charts. Obviously, uh, this was a massive move, could coincide with Powell talking about there will be definitely be a 75 point basis interest rate rise. Uh, no idea, don't care, but the pattern's the same. Three levels of rise, high of day, break in structure, pull it back up, three pushes, and a vertical move. Now the British pound has been under quite a bit of pressure and the talk around is that the pound has been tanking because of their quick turnover of their new prime minister. And again, this is just evident of how the news can uh, <laughs> trick traders into chasing things. And, uh, you know, I mean, it has nothing to do with anything uh, with these movements. Mar traders can believe whatever they want, but the process keeps you protected from what your false beliefs may trick you into trading in the market. So again, the first priority for me is, have they triggered a previous day's high or low? We have been in a market that's making new lows. Process, day one. Day one breaks the high of the week. Peak formation high. A lower peak formation high stop hunt on day two. Do not counter trend the peak formation, giving traders the shorts in the London window. They come down and put the gap peak formation in, consolidated inside. Peak formations up on day three. Coming from the high of the week, our target potentially may therefore initially be the low of the week, which at this stage becomes the low of day two, higher low. Day one now can be, our, so, We've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day one, day two, day three, but our move from the high of the week, day one is Monday, day two, Tuesday, inside bar, day three breaks out of the inside bar, day four reverses inside and stop hunts inside bar traders and fades away, peak formation low, breaking the low of not only Thursday, so the low of the week now, but it also breaks down through Friday's low into Thursday's peak formation longs coming out of that breakout. Now, why am I talking about this? Because people keep telling me the day count, confusing them. Um, well, if you master the day count, this will help you master the setups in the sessions that you're trading. So for example, the pound might move better some most days of the week during London, but uh, you'll have setups in every session depending on how the template unfolds. But when you see the larger picture and you can understand the day count, you'll have a bias of where you should be heading in that session. So we come down, we've talked about being inside. The market breaks the previous day's low. So the first thing I always think about when a, a low or a high is broken in a market that is running away, so it looks like a strongly trending market, we have breakout traders at the low of the day on other time frames, four hour, daily, one hour, that are in the money and they have not had a stop hunt yet. They have not had a stop hunt, 
meaning that they went short and they're in the money all the way down. They're up 75 pips, 100 pips, uh, and they're holding on to it because it's going 500 because the government's unstable and, and the pound's going to tank tonight overnight on Friday. My process remains the same. Heading into the 12 candle window, this is the high of the session for London. This is the most recent high as it collapses down in the first hour. The high of the session is right there. The market proceeds to auction down for 30 to 45 minutes. And when we get to 45 minutes, it engulfs and goes sideways into the close of the hour. This is three pushes into the low. The first hour stays down. It doesn't go up and put a high in place. It goes down and puts a low in place and consolidates and into the open of the new hour. We have an engulfment pin hammer short squeeze set up for a vertical move. And the first target on that vertical move is guess what? Into traders who are short in that space at the low of the day. Now I know there's traders who, who love saying this is all great in hindsight. Let me explain this to you. This is a setup. This is an actual setup when you understand timing, the high and low of the day, the nature of how they establish the high and the low, and how that coils and sets up heading into the new hour. This is a setup. So this has nothing to do with hindsight because you're going to have this show up again and again and again. And you might be short in here and holding on to it and it goes vertical and you're wondering why you got stopped out or you're wondering why maybe you should sell more up here because it's going to go back down and retest the low. Now I'm going to repeat another phrase that I say over and over again. If the market comes out of a short squeeze, do not counter trend. If the market comes out of a long squeeze, do not counter trend. Because this is where they dump it into the open of the New York session. They're putting in a new low of the day. They are not going to let these shorts out of the market. All these lower level shorts are trapped. If they go down any lower, guess what? These losers can get out at break even, small profits, or maybe just a small loss. Currently, they're either stopped out or they're holding on to a loser. And this market isn't just going to go a little bit in the opposite direction. This market now has the potential to conduct a measured move. The measured move of the high and the low. We see that it's gone two full expansions of the range, not Fibonacci's, not, you know, any of these other mathematical. It's just 100% expansions of the range. Super simple. I'm not complicating anything. And if you come back and look to the high of the day, we've gone roughly the box between 50 and double zeros. They've gone 25 to 50 pips outside of the previous high of the day. So... Point being is I when we see a setup like this, I wouldn't be looking to counter trend anywhere because every counter trend, even, even if you scalp 25 in here somewhere, the if you're not in the original squeeze and the New York open, the only short opportunity that I would consider in a situation like this, if I were going to trade, is the engulfment after the peak formation is locked in, stop hunting back into the New York open longs. So we've got our market, it breaks out, pulls back in the New York open. These traders, once this market breaks down on the inside, are in the money back into the high of the day. So they've gone, they've gone 50 pips. They've got the London shorts. They break down and pull back and collapse into the New York session longs before resuming the long trend. So we talked about short squeezes in our last video. Again, uh, two easy trades long. If you were looking for a high of the session short, the collapse first and then the continuation trade for 50 pips is a great trade. Afterwards, again, you can see as we get towards the end of the 12 candle window, the strength of the long trend continues for a couple of more hours. So I talked about this right at the beginning of the session, grouping my, my instruments into baskets, pound, euro, Aussie, New Zealand. The indexes 
gold and oil have similar patterns to those four forex crosses. The other three US dollar crosses I group as one separate basket as well. And again, out of those pairs, I'm only looking for the best template, the cleanest template to trade. So for example, I, I tend to be biased with the indexes oil and gold because they move further. So if my thesis is right on these setups, I look at the forex pairs to identify the templates. I look at how they compare to the other the other instruments, the index oil and gold. And then I'm looking for which one behaves the best in that first hour, the cleanest price action. I may have a first hour trade. Once I've confirmed my thesis or I've targeted a couple of pairs, I'm looking for one or two large explosive moves. That's it. If I take a Forex pair, same situation applies. I, I like the Canadian dollar in the U.S. session. It tends to uh, have a lot of fairly clean moves. And again, both the Canadian and the U.S. Uh, cross pairs being traded in that session as opposed sometimes to maybe the yen or the Swiss being traded where they may trade better in the Asian session or the Europe session. Euro, we've broken the previous day's low. We've broken the previous day's low. When they go vertical like this, after the break of a low, it's on Friday, there's no news. There's no news. Okay, so the, so the Powell's come out and said, we're going to you know, make a 75 point base interest rate rise. There was nothing else scheduled on the calendar, but remember what we talked about. I keep, I keep drawing these lines. I keep emphasizing don't counter trend the peak formation. You get a short squeeze. Say you've come along and you're just coming along for 930 New York and you get home and you go, oh, darn, the move, the trade was in the first hour. I've missed out, but I'm going to short this because it took out the lower high of, of the London session. Short squeeze, peak formation, low. Do not counter trend an explosive move. New York opens. We get an engulfment. It takes out the high. It takes out the high of the day. So remember when it triggers a high or a low. So we get a breakout down low. It reverses again. You'll see the three push pattern. Pullback continuation. New hour about to open. We've got our triple bottom. And you'll notice trap volume below the quarter. So they break down. The triple bottom is below the quarter level. There's another clue. There's a space. This should go vertical very quickly. There's very little order flow in here. The order flows up top at 50, goes vertical. They dump it down into the open. They dump it down into the open. We have a break in structure. We keep, I, I keep repeating this, break a structure, dump it into the open, explosive short squeeze. Do not counter trend the peak formation. This is a long trade. They break out, they trigger longs. They trigger longs in the market. They put 30, 40 pips of heat into them before resuming the up move. They don't let those initial shorts, they don't stop them out. They consolidate sideways. When you see a market consolidating without hitting the stops, think explosive move. They come back and get the longs that are in early who didn't take any money off. So a good question from a trader that I got the other day is, um, do you hold on to these trades or do you just get out? This is my trade, the front side of this move. If they get to a high or a low, I'm out of the move. I'm, I'm taking the money. If it doesn't continue holding that front side, which we'll talk about on gold, I'm out. Because guess what? Somebody's going to get hit. They're going to come back and get the money. Then they consolidate it and they resume the trend. They blow through this. They put another 30 to 40 pips. And... This whole template becomes a larger ascending triangle. So again, identify. They break out and dump it into the low. They, they put a low in place with three pushes at the open of the New York session. And all of these lower level shorts are trapped. They're not going to let them out. So you have to be constantly thinking, who's caught? Who's caught? If they let them out, guess what? They don't lose any money, and the only way to make money is for somebody else to lose. I'll let you review your own charts. This is the Aussie dollar. Again, Aussie, New Zealand, Euro, and Pound, all similar. So I'm only, if I'm trading one out of those four, I'm only looking for the one with the best template. If I'm trading one of the Swiss CAD yen, I'm looking for the one with the best template. So it's about the pattern 
that I can identify that has the cleanest price action and I'm only looking for one of those to trade. Now personally I liked gold the best uh, because it layered into the previous day's low. They locked in the previous day's low in the London session. To me this was a uh, the golden setup although the other pairs obviously set up uh, clean as well. I know that when gold moves and comes out of a consolidation and a short squeeze, it will explode. So where we can get 25, 50, maybe 100 on other pairs, gold may, might do for three levels, it might go 300. And again, do not counter trend gold oil or the indexes. If you are in one of these explosive moves and you come to the screen, do not counter trend them. The new... I'm long at I'm long in the engulfment. As soon as this market explodes, it's about the timing. We have three pushes at the end of the hour, the reverse head and shoulders, the break in structure. We have a new break in structure on the inside. They dump it back into the low, long, long, and long on the break of the bear candle. The market explodes. I'm holding on to this. This market, my first target was the high of the day. It gets blown through. They have Shorts triggered at the low of the day. My thesis is that this potentially will now go to the other side and hit the high of the day. It's Friday. We have an explosive short squeeze. Explosive moves. We talk about first bounce opportunities. There's no news. The market puts a low in place. One push. New hour. Two pushes. Three pushes, break in structure, and a fourth push at the New York Open and an engulfment pin hammer to re-enter and add to my existing long positions. I am holding on to this. The market, though, behaves in a creeping trend. We get to a new hour without taking out the previous day's high. I'm adjusting all the way up. When this market broke down, I cut the trade and locked everything in and called it a day. This is the front side of the move. Potentially now we could be seeing the beginning of the back side. That's as simple as I get. I got a micro trend line. It breaks. I've got three levels of rise. I've added and added and added into this trade. We haven't exploded through the previous day's high. We obviously eventually did, but I don't want to sit through two or three more hours holding on to this. I am locking it in. Once it's locked in in your account, it's yours. If you want to hang around and trade longer because there's another you know, bigger move later, no problem. But nothing's to stop this from doing what it did on Thursday, which is similar, but it broke down and then rolled over. And I'd hate to be in a very, very, very large trade and holding on in hope mode. That's not my strategy. My strategy is if I'm in long, I've got my line there. If it hits my target and takes me out, great. If I'm still holding on to this trade and it breaks at any point, I cut it. I'm done. It's locked in. That's as simple as it gets. There's no other variables. Low of the day, high of the day. They triggered the previous day's low. They put a peak formation low in. They traded off of double zeros at the end of the London window. Is it possible that double zeros then could be a level that we could see them trade back into. Maybe, but I need to watch and wait and see what they do. They go down before the session starts and put a low in place at the low below the previous day's low. They go down a second time before breaking structure. They trade back down into it. I am loading the boat on this setup. In the interest of time, I'll show the other templates on NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow, and oil. But You'll notice again similar templates to the Forex pairs and gold, just subtle variations. So we have a market that's gone down, broken the previous day's low, revisited the low in three pushes. We're already below the previous day's low. The explosive short squeeze, we can only go long. They layer on top of yesterday's low of the day at the New York Open. New York opens with a engulfment and they trade back one push, two push, three pushes. 12 minutes into the open just prior to the end of the 15 minute bar we have our third push pin hammer at yesterday's low of the day for an explosive huge move back up uh, through the high of the day so somebody asked another great question uh, is it always uh, in the first couple of minutes the pin hammer no I have no idea when it's going to be but 
when it's there and my thesis is there, I'm looking for that. It could be 44 at 44 minutes. You know, the market opens at 9.30. It could be at 9.44. It could be at 9.42. That's towards the end of the 15-minute bar. If that happens, understand what that means. It's going to close as a 15-minute pin hammer. Three pushes and a pin hammer, 42 minutes in to the hour, right? So we could see 15 to 30 minutes or maybe 45 minutes. This market goes up before breaking down. It's in the new hour, seven minutes into the new hour. So basically, we have a 20, 25-minute trade. Uh, the market's gone to 500 pips. 500 pips from 36,650 to 37,250 uh, in 20 minutes. Uh, this was 1642, 9.42 in the morning to 17.07, so 20, 25 minutes. 25, 30 minutes in that range, 500 pip move. Understanding the process, we have yesterday's low broken. They trade back and forth. We can redraw our highs and lows. I'm targeting the U.S. session. They break out of that consolidation. We have a break in structure in the London window. So we have a higher high. It took out the high of the Asian session before breaking down. Breaking down and this three push pattern up and the blow off move to put in the triple bottom and then the short squeeze. Do not counter trend the peak formation. Market comes down from the peak formation high. So traders have asked, well, how do you know that's the peak formation? And then there's another peak formation. So two things. Uh, that's correct. We've got a peak formation high, but they come down and trade into the new low. So now we have a possible long re-entry. If traders were trading later in the session, we now have a long re-entry off the low of the session, the new higher low. So we're at the low of the session. If there's a long setup, to go back to the high of the session, low of the session, high of the session. Simple as that. Dow Jones 30, same same pattern. I'm using the 15 minute chart. Um, some traders have asked, well, they said, oh, does it, you know, I, I want to use the five minute, the, I don't like the one minute, it's too volatile and 15 minute. That's your choice. Uh, the, the only difference is obviously to add positions to build size these candles on these 15 minute and five minute charts are going to be, you know, maybe this particular candle on the Dow, uh, the high is 213. It's a 100 pip candle. It's a 100 pip candle. If you understand the timing and the nature of the pattern and the template that you're trading and you have a thesis to get into the trade, the one minute chart gave you a 25 to 30 pip stop. So, <clears throat> and again, this may be where you start your position and then if you're adding into it again the pin hammer at 1642 12 minutes into the new york session they've put a low in place traded down into the low with an engulfment at the first two minutes of the session and so we've got one push that hits the stops two push three push 12 minutes in you have another pin hammer engulfment that gives you a stop roughly of about 30 to 40 pips as well. So the nature of this setup is that if this doesn't explode on the next candle, I'd be very, very, very suspicious about cutting it right away. These should be explosive. Remember what's come, what's happened here. They're, they're coming out of a consolidation. They're coming out of the consolidation into the open of the session. That's a three push pattern. That's a coil that should explode. That should explode and go vertical. If it's going to go, it shouldn't be sitting around and going back and forth. This should go and be over quickly. This consolidation coil is the dead giveaway for the explosive trade. Now, oil was a little bit different, obviously, a different chart template. But the one thing that it did give us today was a peak formation low below the previous day's low. That's a large peak formation. It's Friday, so something to consider, peak formations below the previous day's low. That means Monday may be a narrow range day or a day two coming out of the peak formation from Friday. So day one, day two, day three, we could have a, a, a Tuesday high of the week opportunity. Uh, Monday may be a, a narrow range day. No idea, don't know, but I know that we have volume trapped on Friday on on these pairs the u.s cross is obviously above the previous day's high but we've got our volume trap below the previous day's low and then just coming back to numbers so this previous day's low basically 
is between 0 and 25. So that range, where may we, we, we may see them come back into and act as a level of support. Now, I actually traded oil at New York Open as well. So I had gold and oil today. And again, the thesis was very similar. I did not trade the move out of the low of the day. I was looking specifically for the 930 opportunity to enter this market back. This pin hammer after the open, five minutes into the open, was my little gift, a little consolidation for the squeeze. I was expecting an explosive move back to the high of the day for 75 pips, done and dusted. This was a zero stress, low hanging fruit trade. So again, the same as shorting this, same as shorting that back to the low, we have our low put in place in that first 15 minutes, they put the low in place. One push, two pushes, three pushes at the open, it starts to break out and pull back. A little pin hammer five minutes in for a nice coil on top of that three push consolidation for an explosive vertical move. Now I know there were traders that messaged me that shorted this. This was a fantastic trade. Uh, after I was out of this, I was focused on gold. I closed both of those trades out and decided that that was an, uh, it was a massive day. Thank you, uh, locking it in, taking what was what I consider to be a big gift on a Friday. Did not want to muck around and give any of that back. So templates, if you can, you know, some traders are only trading London because of their location. Some traders are only trading Asia because of their location. Each day, yesterday on oil, the same three levels, high of day trade setup that we just looked at on, other, on the other US dollar crosses, three levels of rise. We have a similar setup on Wednesday, peak formation low, the market took out the high of the day, traded back into the low of the session, went back to the high of the session, and then a short squeeze into the low of the session into our peak formation for a short squeeze at the end of our 12 candle window. Now I'm, I'm just using this on oil because all the templates will show up at some point no matter what instrument you're trading. This is basically a head and shoulders. Three peaks broken broken down in the London session. It broke the low of the uh, London window. There's our three levels of rise into the US Open for the easy, no stress trade back through the low of the day for what we talked about the other day, a measured move. This needs to become unconscious competence so that you can recognize this heading into the session that you're trading for your best opportunities to trade. Again, similar, we have three peaks. We have a market that breaks down in the gap. So instead of going back to the high of the day, they break down in the gap and go to the low of the day. Again, something similar to what we just saw, the short squeeze opportunity 30, 15 to 30 minutes into the session. If you didn't get that initial move, the New York Open takes traders into the high of the day. It opens up high and takes out the high of the day. We talked about front side, back side. New York session takes traders into the high of the day, breaks structure and gives a 50 plus pip right shoulder trade on the back side of that move. That's as simple as I'm making things. So I can only emphasize to study your timing window. Understand that if you're trading in these other sessions, your your London obviously is going to give some great opportunities. Some instruments, Asia is going to give some great trades on certain days. But if you master these templates, you will be able to identify the explosive, big, scalable trade setups when you're at your session to trade them. So congratulations to some of the traders. I, they've messaged me uh, with what their results, P&L were and everything, and they've had some seriously big weeks. We keep saying this over and over again. Uh, these markets have been incredible, and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. So don't worry about trying to do it all in one day. Don't make mistakes that can put you underwater. Keep it simple. Master your craft. Keep getting better. Make it happen. Make it simple. And may the markets go with you. Have a great weekend, traders.